Yo, Elliot, me and my girl talk about potentially moving together a couple years from now. And I was wondering what would be the best place to stay. I'm in Texas right now. Doesn't seem like a bad place to stay, but do you have any suggestions, predictions, or opinions on living in Texas? I think Texas is a great place to be. If I wasn't in Florida, I would consider Texas. There are a few other states that I would consider, but Texas would be my second choice. Florida, of course, because, well, Florida is better. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we were the first state to abolish mandates. Um, we've got a great governor. doesn't mean he's going to be our governor forever, so anything can happen. I would put Texas second in line, and I would also say that Texas has a benefit that Florida doesn't have. In fact, Texas has a benefit that no other state in the country has, and that's why it's more... Um, it's more probable that Texas would secede than any other state. And of course, there's a union or there's a there's a, a commission or I forget what they call it of states where they're we're coming together and we're saying, OK, we're going to back each other up if shit hits the fan. Right. A convention of states. And, you know, Texas is one of those. I think Tennessee is one of those. A lot of most of most of the southern states, you know, southern Midwest sort of states. Um, are part of this convention of states that are saying, you know, shit hits a fan, we're going to we're going to stick together against the ty tyrannical uh, power from above. But Texas, of all states, has its own power grid. It has its own energy. It has its own oil. Right. It has it basically has its own economy. Uh, Texas can cut it, it could, could just bound itself off on the south and the north and be fine and not have to trade with anybody. Texas could be a country in and of itself right now and just trade within Texas, right? And so that's one of the benefits of Texas. And Texas is so big, it crosses so many different, uh, I don't wanna say time zones, but even climate zones, right? There are different climates in, in, in Texas. So Texas is really like its own country. And uh, if I were to be anywhere besides Florida, it would be Texas. So I don't see why you would wanna move with your wife anywhere else. Um, one thing I would, it doesn't sound like you're moving in with her, but one thing I would, uh, invite you to do is to remember that it is of, of the rightly ordered relationship. Number one, to wait until you're married to move in, but I'm not saying that that's what you're going to do. And I'm not forced, I'm not saying you need to do that. I think it's a good idea. If you want to do things traditionally, tradition usually leads to good results, right? And I only know that by looking in my life, not because I knew because experience has shown me, wow, following tradition, even though it seems restrictive, it seems austere, even though it's sort of ascetical in a way, right? Because you need discipline and you have to put away your, your ego, you got to put away your effeminacy, you got to put away your attachment to pleasure, right? To follow tradition, right? If, whenever you follow progress, whenever you're following modernity, you're basically following sin. Right. Because it's expediency. It's a feminacy. It's, oh, this feels good. Oh, this makes sense intellectually, but spiritually it's dead. So whenever we follow our whims, whenever we do what we want to do, or we're doing what the rest of the world is doing, just know that you can't serve God and mammon at the same time. Essentially, we're worshiping Satan. We're living in, we're living in sin. I, if I could, I just have to say this to you. I'm not telling you what to do, but I just, it's incumbent upon me as a man with Jesus Christ behind my back, having my back to say, look, just consider that you will be living in sin. If you're going to be with this girl, marry her. If you're going to live together, marry her. If you're having sex with her, marry, you are married. This is what I, this is just my assertion. You're already married. I also notice in the old Testament that there are no marriages, at least in Genesis. In Genesis, there are no marriages. I haven't seen a marriage yet. How does somebody get married? So we had Isaac marry Rebecca recently, right? As I'm going through these stories with my children. You know how he married Rebecca? Brought her into the tent and had sex with her. That was it. That's how the story goes. He met Rebecca. This was to be his, uh, his arranged marriage in a way, right? His dad was like, hey, marry these girls, right? That's another thing to take notice. That back in the day, the parents would like say, you know, they would have a hand in or they would make suggestions about who you marry. Now it's like an affront. It's like, how dare you tell me who to spend the rest of my life with and to pass your genealogy on and to create your legacy through? You have no right to tell me, right? Which is actually not true. But anyway, so it was sort of an arranged marriage and he, uh, he didn't have a big ceremony. There weren't lots of gifts. There was no music playing. There was no whole, a whole lot of drinking and drunkenness. 
and all the stupid debauchery that we do today, or even how, you know, we put women on the pedestal, right? During the wedding, like every woman wants a wedding. A lot of women want a wedding, but they don't want to get married. Meaning like the wedding day is all about their Disney princess day. I don't think you need a Disney princess day to be married. Isaac took her into the tent, did the deed, and was like, you my wife now, right? <laughs> she's your wife. You can move her into your house and you have a sex with her, she's your wife. Right? Why do we have to get the government involved? Why? Why? Why do I need a government sanction? Back then, because I'm reading this book, this book is on the, um, a lot of history on marriage and family, on marriage and family by St. John Chrysostom. And it was, you know, he, he preached in like the 300s. So it was a long time ago. And there was, at this time, there was no state intervention. It was literally between the two families and it wasn't even done in church. You know how, like, you know, I'm Catholic. So, you know, the traditions change, I guess. So they're like, oh, you need to get married in church. Well, back then they just needed a blessing from their bishop. That's all it was. It was, oh, you know, we're, we're, we're married, right? We, we're, we're doing this and we just were seeking the church's blessing, right? So just food for thought for anybody who is, has turned off and has disdain towards the, towards the secular institution of marriage, but understands the spiritual reality, understands the spiritual gift of marriage and uh, doesn't want to be hold into the state. But the bottom line is the state's going to be hold you anyway. Even if you move in with a woman, they're going to treat you like you're married, right? You've heard these stories about guys who didn't even live with a woman, but it was his girlfriend and he had to pay alimony when they broke up. It's like, I'm not even married to her. We don't even live together. But the government is the big daddy right now. And that's what's gotten us into a lot of this mess. So my advice, of course, would be either she moves in with you, you move in together, never move in with a woman, and she's your girl, make her your wife. If she's not wife material, then you should have figured that out before moving in with her, right? That's my opinion on that. You got to do some vetting, and, I, and maybe, maybe I'll do another video on, you know, the in-depth vetting. Not easy, not easy, not easy. And I'm not being ignorant of the challenges that you guys face. I, I understand them there, but I still have to hold fast to what I know works. In a Tradition works in a traditional society. We live in a non-traditional society. So I'm making, um, make no illusions. I'm not a fool to think that like, just because I'm saying it or because it's tradition is going to work. We live in a diabolically disoriented age. So, you know, the, it calls for different weapons. Anyway, it's a little bit, a little bit of a rant on that. Uh, I hope everything works out well for you, dude. I wouldn't pick up and go anywhere. I would stay right there in Texas. I think Texas is awesome. Don't mess with Texas. None. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.